Heather Pickin, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the benefits of negative thinking. That's right. Can you really have a benefit of negative thinking? Absolutely. Uh, if you're watching a lot of videos uh, on YouTube land, you probably have noticed a lot of them talking about you know, being happy, raising your vibration, whatever you want to call it. It is 100% impossible to be 100% positive and happy every single day. I guarantee it. I remember listening to a speaker, this is years ago, and one of their speeches was about not thinking negative thoughts, put a rubber band on your hand and basically snap it every time you have a negative thought. That to me is very gimmicky and very problematic. So first off, according to the National Science Foundation, the average person has 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day. 80% are negative and 95% are repetitive. So guess what? Trying to think positive thoughts is going to be impossible. Trying to fill your brain 100% of the time, it's unrealistic. So the question is, how do I embrace the negative thinking? Well, going back to Stoicism, their philosophy was about embracing what they called negative visualization. And I'm going to pair this in the same realm of negative thinking. The benefits that they saw in visualizing something negative, and basically what they meant, if you are doing something, let's just say if I am launching a program or a product, wouldn't it make sense to think about what could go wrong? I remember being in presentations where I'd have to give a big presentation and I would actually think about everything that went wrong. Um, that negative thinking was actually a benefit to me. So the negative thinking in some respects will help you to balance your mind, find the loopholes of anything that you're putting out there. Let's put this in the context of a relationship. I know a lot of women and some men, but I find it's mostly women who are guilty of this. They go out on a first date. They get really infatuated with this person because they don't see the downside. That actually is called infatuation. Uh, what you want to do, and this is what I did. Please do not tell my fiance. Can you promise? Okay. What's on, What's YouTube, on YouTube, YouTube stays on, stays YouTube, on YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. So don't tell him. When I met my fiance, Ed, and he's amazing, I would find the drawbacks to him right away. Now you might say, oh, that's crazy. No, it's called being balanced. A lot of relationship coaches, they teach a fantasy. <laughs> unicorn kind of a person that they would be a match for. And this is so unrealistic. This is why relationships have so many issues. I'm not going to get into that today. I could write a book on it. Oh, wait a minute. I did write a book on it. I really want to point out is that can you see how negative thinking can be a benefit to you in any area of your life. I actually use this concept in the Vision Method Intensive class and show you how to balance your mind instantly over anything that you could think of that runs your psychology. Can you imagine how powerful that would be? If you could do that, and I'll tell you the benefits, it helps you to free that real estate in your mind, those unresolved issues that have been rattling around your brain for years, they will hold you back from every single area of your life. When you can transform and transcend any of the things that you're thinking, oh, that's so negative, why did that happen? There's actually benefits. There's actually benefits of those negative things happening. Now, the question is, how can I balance my mind? So the next thing I wanna talk about as it relates to negative thinking and the benefits of negative thinking is perception. The reason why you may beating yourself up right now because you're, because you're like focusing on why am I thinking negative? It could be your judgment, giving yourself this judgment call on your thinking, living in that YouTube land that teaches you just to think happy. I'm here to tell you, that you need to embrace the negativity. You want to really have a balanced mind thinking. So you wanna have a ratio of positive and negative thinking. You're never gonna turn off your negative thinking. But if you find that your negative thinking is creating that head noise or that mental real estate in your mind, it's taking up that big pie in your mind, then that is gonna be a problem. And so the reason why that could be a problem is that you have unresolved 
issues. Any unresolved issues in your past will dramatically impact any area of your life. Think about any area of your life where you feel disempowered, uh, that you cannot overcome. It is because your unresolved issues, unresolved perceptions, highly negative, highly charged emotions. So if you don't dissolve these emotions, you're going to be living in Groundhog Day over and over again, over and over again. It's that feedback loop. So how can you use this negativity um, as a benefit? If you're feeling like you're beating yourself up, well, use this as an emotional guidance tool. So for example, let's just say you didn't perform the best at your job or maybe in your business, you blew a deal, whatever it is. What you want to do is you want to have reflective awareness and when you're in the moment, when you're looking at, okay, what is actually a benefit of me screwing up this business deal? Well, in the future, it's going to teach me that I need a sales script or whatever. Uh, the same thing goes for work performance. I remember, let me tell you a story. I was uh, at a presentation where I was thinking in this presentation that I had to just stuff everything in there, just stuff because I was a people pleaser. I was a people pleaser thinking that I had to get all my information in this talk to please everyone. Rule number 997, never create a talk to please everyone. You try to please everyone. You please no one. Refer to my link below on how to stop giving your power away video. I created this talk. I jammed so much information. It failed, but did it really fail? Well, number one, I did get some business out of it. Uh, that's always a sure sign that my talk went well, but some of the feedback I got in was too much information. In the moment when I got that feedback, I was beating myself up. I used that as fuel to go to that next level. So I actually had a talk. It was spaced uh, almost two months apart. I used it as my mojo. I'm like, okay, I'm going to make this next presentation even better. I focused on it. I did. I took a page out of Steve Jobs' presentation. He basically practiced 70 hours to do one presentation. Um, that's something I do. I'm like obsessed about if I'm doing a live presentation because I want to master that skill. I want to master my ability to communicate my message. One of the things I did is I looked where I went wrong. So remember I told you that kind of looking at what you don't like about something and learn from it is exactly what I did. I gave way too much information and I also was honest with myself. I really wasn't being true to who I was. And as a result, I found that presentation was kind of jumbled up. It, it was just kind of a mismatch of mismatch of, of things. What I did is I, I listed all the things I didn't like, some of the things that I did like, because I think that's a good thing. And I put it into this presentation. And guess what? This presentation was so fired up and I had people coming up to me. I made a lot of money during that presentation. And I teach people how to do that. I teach them how to really find their unique formula, going out there and speaking, presenting. If you don't know how to present, don't expect to generate money, especially if you have a business, if you want to promote that online. So I learned from it. Was it fun in the moment? It wasn't fun. This is where you can balance your mind, balance your perceptions, and know that for every so-called bad thing, we label it as good or bad uh, according to our highest values, going back to the In Your Life Matrix, which I talk about in the Vision Method Intensive. I know that's a mouthful. When we live by a hierarchy of our top three, you can see how to really draw your power on those negatives and turn them into a positive, but it's constantly balancing your mind over and over again. And so the superpower of doing that is to allow yourself to realize that you're going to have negative emotions. Use your emotions as feedback. So when I look at emotions, I really simply use them as a feedback mechanism. Uh, you know, your intuition trying to get you to wake up. So let's talk about intuition and feelings and feedback. One of the times, actually one of the many times I've used this, uh, when I was in very bad relationships, and I've said this in many videos, I'm in a great relationship now, but I noticed my negativity. Like I had all of these negatives percolating. And it was actually a benefit because every time they were showing up, when I would not listen to those negative emotions, I found I would stay in those relationships. I would not stand in my power. I'd literally give my power away. And I'm all about 
giving or not giving your power away. I'm all about standing in your power. So I found each time I did that, that was feedback. Each time kind of see it in a different way. And so what that, what, what's happening when you start seeing feedback in negative emotions, uh, I call it a patternicity. You start seeing the patterns. You start seeing the reoccurring themes, not making yourself bad. So, oh, guess what? I have this negative emotion. I should not be in this relationship or I need to communicate my feelings. Can you see how that can be a benefit? So you really don't want to get rid of any negative emotions period. Your negative emotions are benefits. Negative emotions are feedback mechanisms from your intuition to your conscious mind to get you to pay attention. If you don't listen to those negative emotions, then what happens is you suppress. Anytime you suppress your negative emotions, they will get expressed in a different way. We now know this through epigenetics, psychoneuroimmunology of how all the body creates disease through the mind. This has been studied, although not wildly promoted in big pharma. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Uh, that's another message in and of itself. I'm not negating Western medicine. What I truly believe in what I've known and what I've studied is that our minds are powerful and to not make yourself bad for having a freaking negative thought. I have negative thoughts all the time. I just gave you the stats on how negative we think, but the benefit of those negative thoughts I can discard those negative thoughts. I could say, oh, that's interesting. I'm thinking that I can create a strategy around that negative thought. And the last thing I will say about the highly charged emotions, if you have a ratio of negative thinking that is highly charged, where you feel like you're not taking action, it tells me you have some subconscious blocks that you need to kind of unpeel the layers of. Let's just say you want to go to that next level. You know, you want to be that high achiever, that high performer, but you can't take the action. Well, that's a subconscious block. My genius zone is really unpeeling those layers, getting to the root cause. It has to be the root cause. Dissolve those emotional issues. You know where those come from? Typically mother or father. However, you were raised growing up because most of your beliefs were formed from the age of, believe it or not, zero to seven. <laughs> look back, look back on your life to see where those things have impacted you the most and anything that you can't love and you are going to own as baggage. So when I'm talking about negative thoughts, it's the ratio in which you're in your perception. You know, you're going to have negative thoughts all the time. Are you going to attach meaning to them? They actually could have a positive meaning. They can give you a strategy. Like I talked about, they can get rid of that toxic relationship. So when working with clients, I, we work on all different types of issues. What I find is that if they can't move forward on a project or in any area of their life, there's something that's rattling around in their brain. Race, negativity, love those negative thoughts. Don't stay in that place of your negative thinking, but I want to promote balanced mind thinking and realizing that you're a human being having this experience and we are here to experience all the flavors of the rainbow experiences. And once you, once you understand and you can evolve to that next level as a leader, you're going to be great. If you like this video, let me know. Make sure that you subscribe to this video or this channel if you haven't. Hit that bell icon because it'll notify you when new videos show up. Just because you're subscribed doesn't mean you're going to see those videos. So you have to actually subscribe. You have to hit that bell Thumbs up if you like this video. Let me know, comment below if some of these strategies, if this makes sense on the negative thinking and any other videos that you want me to do. Until next time, this is Heather Pickin and live fearlessly. <laughs>